So you finally shook off the nerves, went in and sat down for the formal interview, and they open it up with the dreaded, tell me about yourself, which is the most open-ended question of all. And you think, what exactly do they want from me? What are they looking for? Do they want to know what city I live in? How many kids I have? Where I was born? What I want to do with life? What I'm good at? What I'm bad at? What do they want? It's such a hard question to answer if you don't prepare in advance because you don't really know what it is they're looking for and you can ramble. As a person who does mock interviews and has been doing them for the past three years, I can tell you I have maybe once or twice in all those years had a couple of people answer this question perfectly. This is one that most people get wrong. So in this video, I'm going to tell you how to not get it wrong. I'm going to tell you what it is that the interviewer is looking for. I'm going to help you recall how to answer this question in three parts. And as we go along, I'm going to share with you my example for how I answer this question. If we haven't met yet, my name is Bree. I'm an RNNP mentor, interview strategist, content creator, and educator. Welcome to the channel. Okay, the key to answering this question, and really any question you're asked in an interview, is putting yourself in the place of the employer. What is it they want? What are they looking for? And a lot of this comes down to stereotyping. I'm sorry, it's profiling at its finest, but that it, stereotypes do exist for a little bit of a reason. Let's think through this. The type of provider who does well in a trauma role is a little different. They have different skill sets and talents and weaknesses than someone who succeeds well in a palliative care position. They're different professions and different personality types are drawn to them for a reason. Most people don't desire to work in jobs or career specialties in which they struggle all the time. So employers, whether they know it or not, are looking for people who fit the stereotypes of people who do well. So you, as the candidate, are going to show them how you have the skills of someone who typically succeeds in that role. If you want to know a little bit more about how to get inside the mind of the interviewer, watch this video, which I'll link somewhere up here, talking about the specifics of what that person is looking for. So what is the interviewer looking for in this question? Well, they are not looking to hear your entire life history about four score and seven years ago. I can promise you that. What they're looking for is experience and skills experience and skills, which comes down to sharing your timeline and your unique talents. So what I advise for candidates is to write down answers to questions that are asked, commonly asked questions that you can anticipate in your interview. And there are a lot of them, but this is the one that you are almost guaranteed to get in some way, shape or form. So this is the one, if you get nothing else down pat, you should have a very well formulated answer to this question. And I never advise for people to memorize. When you memorize, the words come across wooden, they lack inflection, they lack passion, it just doesn't seem very genuine. What I instead advise is that you memorize the bullet points, the different targets that you need to hit with each question, and then you know what it is you need to share with them. But every time you rehearse it or share this story, it comes out just a little bit differently and that is natural. Another little bit about why this question is so important before we get into the specifics of how to answer it is this. This question is the root of everything when it comes to job acquisition. It is. It should be cohesive and similar throughout all phases of your job acquisition. What do I mean by that? The resume. So in the objective portion of your resume, this should be there. In the elevator pitch that you would give to someone, the theory behind an elevator pitch is if you're stuck on an elevator with the medical director, the hiring person for this dream job that you want, and you have a minute to three minutes to talk to them, and what would be your sales pitch? That's your elevator speech. That is the same thing as this answer, okay? And then even beyond that, all the questions they ask you in the interview what are your greatest strengths? What are your greatest weaknesses? Tell me about a time that you did well at whatever. Those are all going to build upon the foundation that you laid in this response. So have I hammered it in enough? This question is the most important question of all to get right. So back to what it is they're looking for, experience and skills. 
you can narrow it down without winding all over the place and talking about everything by focusing on three areas of your life. Picture yourself as Ebenezer Scrooge in the middle of your life. And here you are, the reckoning has come and you've got to account for where your life has been, where you're at presently and where you're going. And that helps you to not get lost. All right, so what I find is that most people get lost in the first part. And just like Ebenezer Scrooge, you don't want the entire story that you're sharing with someone to be about all the things that you've done in the past. So if all you're doing is focusing on all the experience you've previously done, if you're just giving them a rundown of your resume, you're missing two thirds of what it is they need to hear from you. So condense it to a minute or two. This is the biggest problem most people have is they can't do that. It's tough for some people, right? Especially if you've worked in healthcare for a long time. I had 16 years at the bedside and I'm a chronic job hopper. So I've had a lot of jobs, but I don't need to give them a, a rundown of every job that I've had. What I need to do is summarize it. So if I was a new grad nurse practitioner, here's how it would sound the first part, the past. Well, thanks so much for having me. My name is Bree. I am an, have been a nurse for the last 16 years of my career. I've spent the majority of them working in acute care roles. I started in ER, spent a lot of time in ICU with a little stint in home health care. And as you can see, my primary focus has always been on dealing with people in the acute, intense phases of their life, period. That's all you need. I don't need to go through every ER job I had and how I won an award here and how I did this project there. No, they can see all that there. Summarize it briefly so they see what it is that motivates you, to see what it is you're drawn to, to see where you're at experience-wise and background-wise. That's the background piece of it. One to two sentences, period. Move on. The second phase is your present. Where are you at presently? And this is going to lay the foundation for moving forward in um, talking about the third part, which is why you want that job. Don't go there yet. Right now you're talking about what it is that's brewing in your life that has prompted a change. For many people, it looks like I went back to school. I'm now going to practice as a different type of healthcare provider. And it should focus on a positive reason for change, even if what's prompting you to make the change is a negative. I think it's fairly okay to state that, but you wanna be extremely brief and very objective about it and move on. And it may sound something like, um, I've been a nurse practitioner for a couple of years working in primary care. I've decided at this point, I really wanna have more time to focus on my patients and develop stronger relationships with them. Primary care has made it very difficult for me to do so because of the census requirements I have been asked to see per day. So I am now pursuing a job within this specialty. So here's how my answer would build on that first part. After 16 years at the bedside, I realized I just desired a deeper relationship with patients. I found myself doing a lot of investigation into what the potential diagnoses could be for patients. And I worked with a nurse practitioner who was working in palliative care that really inspired me to want to do this kind of work. So I decided to go back to school and I've now set to complete graduation next month with my adult gerontology acute care nurse practitioner certification. The third part of your answer is going to be talking about your future. Where do you go from here? And there should be a part A and a part B to this. The first part is talking about your passions, your motivations, you're applying for this job because of what reason. And the second part of that is the yin to the yang. What do you bring that they want? Why do they want you? This is the sales pitch part of it, really. Are you a new or perhaps an experienced NP looking for your next NP job and you are sick and tired of submitting your resume off into the great beyond and having no clue where it's going? or going to interviews, struggling your way through them, feeling super awkward and leaving feeling very deflated. Imagine yourself sitting in the driver's seat, finally negotiating your dream job contract with confidence. This kind of power in negotiation comes from possessing leverage and you obtain this when you have the employer so sold on your skills and talents that no other nurse practitioner will do. I can help you gain this type of leverage by teaching you how to illustrate your value proposition via the formal interview. You just got to stand out from the crowd. And there's hope. Interviewing is not some special talent that only the chosen few possess. This is an easily learned skill set. It starts with identifying weaknesses, preparing responses and questions, and practicing. 
I help new and experienced NPs land their dream job by teaching them expert level interview skills via a digital course and strategizing a unique approach via mock interviews. The investment of time, effort, and a little bit of money will reap dividends for years to come. It is a competitive market, no doubt, but saturation is not the right word. There is a place for you, my friend. If you have further interest in this, please go check out my website at brianp.com. And as always, thanks so much for supporting this channel and watching these videos. So my answer sounds like this. Building upon that last part where I told him I wanted to go back to school because I was inspired by a palliative care nurse practitioner, it would sound something like this. I'm applying for this position because it is truly my dream and my passion. I particularly excel with relationship building, communication and empathy are talents that come easily to me and values that I hold dearly. I find that talking with families in their hour of greatest need brings me joy and is something that I'm particularly adept at. Because I value relationships so much, I'm really a great coworker. I can work well and adapt with all types of people and I also excel in strategic thinking, so I like to develop systems. Cohesive, highly efficient teams, that's my jam. So I've told them past, present, and future why I want them and why they want me. And you can hit all three of these out of order should you want to. You could lead with the end and finish with the beginning. It doesn't matter as long as you hit all three. Once you get the answer to this question down pat, you can just whip it out at any moment. You don't really gotta think about it. You know the bullet points you gotta hit. You may say it in a different way each time, but you can deliver it. And that is the cornerstone of being able to deliver a highly effective elevator pitch. So everything is cohesive from your resume, what you've said in your resume. By the way, if you need help with resume building, I highly, highly recommend the Resume Rx. I'm not a resume writer, I can review them, but I don't write them. And she has some fabulous templates that are specifically designed for the nurse or nurse practitioner in mind. So she's got all this bullet bank of buzzwords. So you can pick what suits well to your specific specialty. So I highly recommend the Resume Rx if you need help building your resume. What you said in the resume is what you said in the answer to that question. And then every question thereafter supports your claim. The bedrock, the foundation of what you said is your experience level and your unique skills. Every single question you answer after that will support that. So here's an example. What is your greatest weakness? Well, I told them that my greatest strengths were relationship building and strategic thinking. So my weakness would be a natural opposite of that. Someone who excels with communicating and talking with people and spending time with people, who are they? They're probably the kind of person who struggles with efficiency and getting through their day on time, right? Because they're a talker. So reflect that. You know, when they say, what is your greatest weakness? My greatest weakness is that sometimes I can be inefficient because I spend too much time talking with people. How have I dealt with this? Well, I have had to develop systems. I've had to really effectively parcel down how much time it takes me to write notes. And so I've developed dot phrases so that I can very quickly get through the note writing phase of my day so that I can then spend it face to face with patients and families, which is how I prefer to work. So I have a weakness, we all have weaknesses, and I've been vulnerable in sharing it, but I'm showing how I've developed workarounds and um, developed strategies to deal with it, and it comes across very sincere because these are two things that naturally would happen in people. So it, it comes across as very genuine and very sincere. If you wanna see how this kind of thing works in real life, I highly advise you watch this mock interview that I did with my friend Rachel, who's a brand new nurse practitioner looking for her dream job, which, spoiler alert, she did in fact land. Um, it's a little bit long, but it walks through everything like strategically what I would recommend to someone as far as making a very cohesive and unified storytelling front in your interview to set you up for success. I know that once you spend just a little bit of time honing your answers and coming across as very genuine, you are going to land your dream job too. So good luck, friends.